All right, and we are live again. It's been longer than I wanted, but that's kind of how things go with me. <clears throat> Very hard to stream consistently during the work week, uh, but I did get Friday off, so we're going to continue now. I think we are on day eight or nine. Can't remember exactly. Uh, let's see here. Oh, day nine, okay. Gotta just start there. Okay, cool. Let's see. Let's see. Gotta meet with people. <clears throat> Can't remember if meeting in the morning is what we. I guess we should overhear stuff. Did we get this? Well, seems that crew are adapting nicely. Kurt, our navigator guy, they're getting on with their jobs like clockwork. Feels like we're back on the open ocean again. They know we're in for the long haul. Well, I'll see to it that they're keeping up the good work. And you see to it that they're entertained when the work is done. I, Grimly. Which one was Grimly? You're short on words, aren't you? Prefer to talk through your music, eh? Okay, so he's our accordion player? A sailor with the heart of a poet. Sure. Yeah, I think that's right. Pretty. There we go. You see Hammond, hard at work on the boiler. Shit. Is there a problem? No, force of habit. Don't need me to sleep at the post. You need something, Captain? You don't need to. If there's any problems, you'll know. I know what I'm doing, Shaw, if that's what you're wondering. You don't need anything, I'm getting back to work. Uh, yeah. I seem to remember his personality being somewhat like that. <clears throat> Alright. And Cordell. She, I made a, I think a major boo-boo with her. Um, trying to protect her dogs. She didn't like that. Captain, we've had our share during the hunting season, but that appears to be winding down. I wouldn't put my faith in there being an abundance of game in the coming weeks. Uh-oh. Shoot. How are we doing? He's freezing. He's demoralized. So we can handle two freezings and two demoralized, but how are we going to... I do have some food. Okay, so I do actually have a decent amount. As long as it doesn't go weeks and weeks and weeks. I think we need 25 minimum before people start starving. Or no, they, they will start starving at 25. But man, I should have got more food from the um, ship. Alright, let's take requests. Just Junior, huh? Uh, Junior likes Shaw. Got a matter we need to settle with you. I don't see the problem here. Tucker. Tucker is going through his personal belongings on the ship, and we found this. A tin of treats, biscuits, confectionaries. Quite a lot. And now I was hardly hiding them away. Ah, oh, now I was hardly hiding them away. They're just my own private selection. A gift from my grandmother before the expedition. Baked them herself. I understand you see these as your personal effects, and that was true at a point. But as it stands, food is food, and we all need and we need all we can. You cannot reasonably hoard it to yourself. They're hardly filling, they're just some biscuits. They're filling enough. Listen, now's not the time to keep something like that to yourself. Onto them, Tucker, but don't waste them. We could use them in a pinch. Mm. 
I mean, I think it's not actually... I mean, we're stuck in the middle of, like, the Antarctic, right? Essentially. Uh, I think we're working under that same... So, agreed, Tucker. Hand in the tin. It will join our rations. I will not deprive my crew of their sentimental object. Tucker's, nah, the middle one's not right. Uh, I think that the rest of the crew would look at this as kind of weird if we let them just keep them. Hold on to them, Tucker, but don't waste them. We could use them in a pinch. Listen, now's not the time to keep that. I mean, this only sensible thing is, like, hand them in. Like, everyone's gonna need food. It might demoralize him, though. That will suck, but... Times like this. Yeah, he's gonna be... Probably demoralized. Maybe not. Call the crew for dinner. Enter the request tent. Yeah, okay. I forget that, like, it just stays open. Um, push pot furnace. Enter the kennels, medical tent. Okay. Sign crew. Um, let's get our demoralized guy. Interview. That should get us some. Decorum, research, and that saves us five decorum as well. <clears throat> Med bay. Let us get this person and this person. Command arrest. Okay. So, that's the three sick people taken care of. For eight research is not bad. The work helps with decorum. I don't think I can still do... <clears throat> so I think that's them taken care of. We're going to need to do... Pat its head, rub its belly, tickle behind its ears. So we are going to want to <clears throat> let's see. I think it's just map. What is this? Well, that's a weird glitch. <laughs> oh, there's my there's my room. It somehow disconnected itself from the ship. Um, before we send people, we got to send people out. So, said hunting is going to become a luxury fairly soon. Everywhere else is four right now. So, I say we go hunting here. Let's get one, two, three, four. And that'll get us five penguins. <clears throat> okay. Um, now. Ooh, we still have a three here. If I do that. That'll put us down to eight, which would be good enough. To, so we can explore here. Wait, is it scout? Okay. So we can send one scout out to search. Yes, that's what we wanted. Um, <clears throat> let's get more food because I'm really worried that we're going to be in a situation where we can't get food. Do I want to send out two scouts? I could keep three scientists. 
Hold on. Let me think. Uh, let's go back. Research the formation of lice leads. What does this do for us? You assign, for each researcher you assign, gain three decorum instantly as well as one research for your expedition. <clears throat> Let me go back. So I could send out... How many... Okay, it takes four to, to search. I forgot. So this one takes three only. I feel like we got to get food and then maybe look for more food. Theoretically, the research will be here to to do whenever. I also don't know how the game is going to go in terms of... <clears throat> so put both of them in here. And then I can either send out scientists, which might be good to get nine decorum back and three research points, or... I guess let's send both scouts. This will give us all... This will give us ten more... For this turn, it will give us... Uh, 60 total food. 10 times 6. Um, which is good. That'll get us through... Almost two more weeks. Which is this one week of gathering food. With what we have stored up right now. 27 plus what we have... In our uh, uh, resource cards already. So let me send them out. That was kind of loud. And I think I'm going to work on getting some decorum. So I can send out all three researchers. Get nine decorum. And three research. I think that's pretty good. Okay. I think that's decent. And then this outer edge is going to make it rough. I kind of wish now that I had gotten the second dog sled thing. Um, that would have been really useful. <clears throat> Much more useful than this right here. Uh, but that's okay. I'm not really sure, certain about heat either. So we've only got one person free, but we're going to have 10, 20, 22, and then this one. So I'm going to have quite a bit of food. Furnace plus 20. I've actually got quite a bit of coal and timber. So I'm kind of feeling confident. Maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't, though. <laughs> oh, that kind of sucks. If I had kept... If I had kept one of the... If I had sent the engineer out and kept one of the scouts, I could have fed the hoosh pot the two fish and had another person go out to explore that's unfortunate oh well gotta live with it let's feed the hoosh let's feed the furnace coal goes in we stay alive feed the furnace let's get I think that's good. Feed the furnace. And... 
Okay, that's good for the furnace. <clears throat> Let's go to the hoosh pot now. I want to save the fish. Let's put in... Oh, these emperor penguins are actually pretty good. Two of them are almost one full ten here. That's not bad. That's 29, that's 49.56. Should be good enough for the next week too. Right. <clears throat> so let's call the for dinner. The crew have their meal. The crew returns to their post despite the time. It's still bright light outside. So now we can talk to people. How are we doing by the way? I forget exactly. He's on our side, but just barely. He's nowhere close. He's pretty solidly. He's solidly. She's solidly. So we want to work on the doctor. I think we want to get the doctor again. Although he doesn't really bring anyone with him. <clears throat> I think we want to focus on the Ham Hammond and the doctor. Mostly. Reading, Mr. Templeton. Yes, though it's difficult to find light, do you still... Do those your age still read? Or has intellectualism passed us by? What is this weird glitch? Well, I haven't read Chilling Horror like yourself. Is that a collection, Mr. Templeton? It is a good read, nonetheless. Okay. I must retire for the evening. I'll see you for the morning's request. Okay, so he's pretty simple. I'm going to call it a night. See you for breakfast. Nothing happening there. It's over here. What's that? One of the doctor's books. Since when could you read? It's got pictures, Dad. You're interested in medicine, are you? A little. Better work than better work than this anyway. Yeah, I mean, well, unless you're the doctor stuck out here with him. Hammond. Alright, this is important. Can't tend to the furnace if I'm nabbing to you. Night. Okay. Fair enough. Barely any taste of these six. You mentioned before, what a brand are they anyway? Apperton. Same group who tend <laughs> who tends those peaches. Yeah. They're shite. At least there's plenty of it. Would rather there wasn't. You'd rather be craving at a time like this? Suppose not. They're just... I don't know. What do they know about tobacco? Fair point. Okay. So it doesn't look like we're actually having many... Uh, conversations. I need to finish developing these. Thanks for stopping by. Ah, oh, come on, doctor. I, I should probably finish cleaning the equipment. Okay. Come, Josephine, in my flying machine. Ah, apologies. The tune has not left me my head in weeks, at the very least. I have found a manner to calm the pack. Huh. I, I feel like trying to get her to interact with the crew is a non-starter. Like, she got upset about it. Uh, she does seem to like talking about music, though. And she does seem to like talking about her dogs. <laughs> if it calms the dogs, then may the tune never leave your head. Let's see. Ah, man. Are you complimenting or interrogating? Your tone suggests the latter. Regardless, you grant me far too much credit, Shaw. Alright, let's just talk about her dogs. Yeah. 
He stares at you before nodding to his sleeping bag. Alright. I'm flattered, but I really ought to get some rest, Shaw. Ugh. What a mess. I think that's it, though. So let's call it a week. And see where we go from here. Crew member will be cured of their malnourishment. Crew member will be cured... Oh, okay. A crew member will become malnourished. And a crew... So, the way that I understand it is that right here, a person will develop freezing. Two crew members will develop freezing. But, we send people off. So, this is basically trading 25 fuel for one person to get freezing. And then this is trading uh, 25 food to stop one person from being malnourished. So we could technically, if we're worried about food, we could go down to half rations. And, um, ah, but the, the decorum sucks too. I don't think I'm ready to lose that much decorum, and I think we're okay-ish on food for the moment. Let's try keeping what we're at. Oh, that is a ton of decorum, though. But we trade 25 fuel for 30 decorum. I think we're okay on decorum, though. Let's keep it normal for now. Front stat, return with five, uh, da, da 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 13 crew available. Front just got freezing. Lefty got freezing. Oh, we got three freezing. Okay, and then two other people were cured of their freezing. No longer demoralized. Okay, so we've got basically... So the way that that would have worked, if we lo if we went down to 25, um, if we went down to half fuel rations, we would have gotten an extra freezing person for the week. Okay. Go ahead and put those three people in. Obviously, that sucks, but might have to forgo Kasha this week. Um, we'll just have to see. Is there anyone to talk to? Doesn't look like it. No. Okay. Let's do the requests. Anything in the journal? Oh, just like standard stuff. <clears throat> Hammond and Kurt. Days are getting darker, Captain. Crew's been asking about using more oil to fuel the lamps. I told them to piss off, but figured I should ask you. Lamplight is not an unreasonable request. That's oil for the boiler. It's more important than making dinner brighter. It also makes it easier to do their work, Mr. Hammond. Aye, well, it's the captain's decision. They'll make do with what they have. The furnace comes first. Give the crew what they want. I won't hear the end of it otherwise. Um, I think... What do I think here? Um, 
I think Hammond obviously wants the middle decision. Would Shaw do that? I think it's not dire yet. So we'll say we'll hold off for now. Let's see if they... Furnace comes first. Ugh, that was a big hit on decorum. Crap. Okay, well, I mean, it is what it is. Um, we're also trying to get Hammond on our side, which... Uh... Oh, he already is, but we want him to stay that way. Captain, Templeton, I won't keep you both too long. After dinner, we should have a discussion about the future direction of this crew. I suppose we should consider moving camp closer to the direction of rescue. Indeed, as for when that should be, well, we'll talk later. Very well. Okay. Pretty simple day. Let's go and do our duty. Um, let's pet the dogs. I think the main thing this week is going to be uh, da, da. Well, it's just going to be exploring, right? So we've got 13 people. What I really need. So technically I have 16 dogs that I can use. If I find some food, I might go ahead and do that. When they say move the camp closer, oh, what is that? Orca Island. So we'll be moving the camp closer that way. So if I find food, I can technically explore three times. I don't know if we're moving closer to... Oh, maybe we have to move closer to Viscount Island. I actually don't know. Who knows? Okay. Um, let's explore. Scout, off you go. That's good. Fish is good. Um, this might be a... This might be setting up for the next week. Let's explore here. Oh, ooh. Okay. Do I have enough people? I do. So what I could do, let me see if I have it. One, two, three, four, two, two. Oh no, he's not. Oh no, I can't use him. Dang it, that sucks. Um, I was gonna make medical supplies, but since he's sick. That's not, that's a no go. All right. Only four fish. I feel like I got five last time. Whatever. Um, Maybe I didn't. Okay, now let's go back to camp. Let's throw some food in the hoosh. Let's throw these two. It'll refresh one dog. Two dogs. Okay, return. Let's go back outside. And let's go pick up Mm. 
I want to keep my scientists free for next week to prevent them. So that'll be five crab tree seals. So that's also another good bit of food. Okay, so I actually still have three people. There's nothing I can do with them. Because I can't... can't actually use him. I wonder... Well, see, if I went and said raise the temperature, that won't heal him for this week. But it will heal him. Yeah, but there's just nothing for those other two people to do. Um, I guess it would get him working, and it would get the other two guys healed. I think it's better to just... It's like getting one medical... I think it's fine. Um, I need all three to... Alright, it's fine. We'll just not... I think, like, the, uh, the main thing in any resource game, which this is at heart, in addition to the narrative game, is to make sure that you are balancing everything, obviously, but also to never waste resources and... You know, every number down here in the bottom left is a resource. So, you know, we want to... I'm not letting the decorum dip too much because I'm not sure. I, I feel like there could be some big dips in it. Um, and you want to avoid zero because it's automatic game over. Um, I'm trying to make sure that these stay at normal. But I always have the option <clears throat> of going down to half in, in healing people or you know using other extreme measures to heal them but basically you try to use all your dogs you know every week try to use all your people every week and you know, balance the situation here if it comes that we need to uh, let's see uh, if it comes that we need to go down to half rations on something then we might have to suspend you know, if we can't find food, for instance, we might have to suspend sending too many people out to, you know, get stuff if there's no food to get, right? So that way people don't get sick during the winter, uh, which would let us treat malnourishment and stuff more easily. <clears throat> uh, okay, so... be good for the ferns. Let's get the hoosh. Crew need feed. Need fed for the week. Feed the hoosh. We're doing pretty decent. I want to... Man. It would have been so good if I had just threw people at getting rations and uh, and coal earlier see I mean I guess you can get a lot of um, obviously there's no uh, fuel out here so having a decent surplus of fuel is important but man and I actually have no idea how I'm going to make 40 weeks isn't this 40 weeks I have no idea how I'm going to make that with what we have Okay. Um, these are only sixes. That's 60, 90. Okay, well, anyway. Okay, feed the hoosh. That's, that'll get us through the next week. All right, let's go with this. I think we're good everywhere. Uh, let's end the week. I'll call the crew for dinner.
Uh, crew have their meal. Crew return to their post. Despite the time, it is still bright light outside. All right. Uh, let's do some rounds to talk to people. He stares at you before nodding to his sleeping bag. Very, very well. The dogs need their rest, as do I, as do you. And Junior, I'm going to call it a night. See you for breakfast. You wish to speak with us, Kurt? Indeed I did. Have you noticed anything about the ground beneath our feet, Captain? It's not about to give way, is it? Not immediately, no. We are looking at the early stages of this ice breaking apart. Oh! Ah, uh, yeah, I see the cracks now. If we don't want to join the dear old temperance, we need to be moving out within the week. Is that so? If we start packing from tomorrow, we'll be safe to move on at the beginning of next week. If we start packing from tomorrow, we'll be safe to move on at the beginning of next week. Any longer than that, we'll be dipping our toes into the water. So, next week's a move week? Well, it is inevitable that we should keep constant movement. Even ignoring the changing ice, our rescue vessel will not be searching for us here. Mm. I think we're ready. I think we can make a move. Get the word out then, Kurt. We leave in a week. I will, Captain. To stay as death, we're moving on. Thank you, Kurt. Have a good evening, Templeton, Cap Captain. Kind of sucks. Let's over here here. Doctor, you seem worse for wear this evening. Sorry, I've not had much sleep lately. Something disturbing your rest. Just some bad dreams. A shame, a shame. Get some rest early, Arthur. I'll inform you if an emergency arises. Oh, thank you, Kurt. You can thank me with a good night's sleep. Let's, uh, yeah, let's go talk to them, actually. Stopping by. Thank you. Same thing as last week. All right, let's see the doctor. I should probably finish cleaning the equipment. Dang it, doctor. Let me... <laughs> Let me try to turn you to my side. Uh, I think he's, yeah, he's still, like, because I didn't actually get a chance to uh, really work on him. I think I just need, like, one more plus loyalty thing. He likes being sort of coddled, but not in a... Oh, Kurt. I'm flattered, but I really ought to get some sleep. Sure thing, bud. Wait. We have to move camp within the coming week. Aye. We wait around any longer, and we'll be swallowed up. Captain Shaw has been cautious. And we are still and we are still set. And we are still set to match the arrival of rescue. Aye. Let's not waste any more bloody time. The boiler can't last forever. Now I'll talk to Templeton. And he must retire. Excellent. And we must too. Okay, so let's set our rations for the next week. Cure to malnourishment, cure to freezing. The fuel spend of the week, the food rations per crew member this week. this oh is this getting down to where we'll have three people okay so it's nine more ten crew available freezing freezing so only two people freezing this week three people cured of their freezing that's pretty good
Move to the next camp. Alright. After a hard morning dragging the boats, the crew come across a deeper snow ahead. Captain, the snow on the ice is getting deeper. We'll need to find a better path before dragging the whole crew through it. I'd be happy to take up the reins. Best we leave that to one of your scouts, Mr. Darling. The ice behind us is encroaching. We didn't lag behind a man with a cane. The old limp isn't that bad, Templeton. It's bad enough. Time is of the essence. I feel like you can respect Kurt while also gently saying, Hey, we need your experience. We don't need you to do the, like, manual labor, right? Well... Or very well. You can't go wrong with my team anyway. Any one of them are capable of finding the path in the ice. Captain, if you want to judge the course yourself, you should go ahead with them. Ill-advised. We don't know what lies ahead. Best not to take any unnecessary risks. Uh... I mean, I do think Templeton's technically right. And Kurt... Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Choose a scout to send forward. Let's bring uh, Ice Savvy Islander, Ice Savvy Islander. They're all the same. But I guess we're going to... Uh, <laughs> Alright, we'll send uh, Quilsey out, I guess. Quilsey, scout ahead and see if you can f can't find us a safe path to the next flow. Pulsey nods to you and Kurt before trudging ahead. I think I hear something. Stop. Oh, wow. The eggshell surface of the flows erupt, revealing a large slimy creature, mouth agape with files of razor-sharp teeth, expectant. Leopard seal. Uh, what was the one for like the big things? Huh.
God damn it. Oh, no. That's so dumb. You guys weren't hearing me at all. <laughs> oh, I'm so mad. Whatever. <laughs> God. <laughs> Streaming's hard, man. It's so hard. Let me make sure of this. God. I'm so dumb. Okay, so, you know, I was just reading the game to myself and, and talking to myself. That's fine. Uh, how far was this in? 50 minutes. 50 minutes of streaming before I realized I wasn't, you weren't even hearing me. Lovely. Huh. How am I going to handle this? Eh, whatever. We'll just chalk it up as being uh, being terrible at this. It's fine. I don't want to go back and play three three weeks worth. Uh, I think that would be well. You know, I mean, I've already seen it, obviously. So, um, plus, it's not a huge deal. Fifty minutes of quiet playing versus hearing me talk through decisions it's fine uh, maybe I'll just put like a notice at the top of the screen or something if I can do that I wonder if you can do that I wonder how you would add those sorts of uh, checks in there maybe something in the uh, the streaming software here on YouTube regardless uh, that was 50 minutes of me playing the game and talking to myself so uh, let's see. I think it should be pretty self-explanatory, though. You know, I mean, it highlights what I choose, and then just go on. Okay. So, Templeton. This ice is teeming with life. Life that has never encountered our like in the past. We'll be able to hunt to our heart's content. Until we come across another leopard seal, we should be cautious. It seems it would be wise to spend a good deal of time here. Uh, I mean, the leopard seal is obviously a cause for concern, but I don't think we can... I don't think we can spend our time worrying about a leopard seal when we have very real problems of not having enough food, not having enough fuel. Uh, we cannot afford to get too comfortable on the ice. It seems it would be wise to spend a good deal of time here. Uh, da, 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 da. So winter is encroaching. He would probably like this just to agree with him. Um, and I mean, it's not a bad idea if we are bulking up on food. It would seem that way. However, we will not be able to stay here forever. Herd has left me his assessment on the cons on the coming dangers. This ice is not stable. Put simply, we have the dead ice encroaching behind us, and the risk of a pressure ridge bubbling up and forming ahead of us. We cannot stay for too long, lest we find ourselves trapped here. Still, that is a worry for another time. For now, our main concern is the crew. Um, they do seem a little shaken, some of them. Of course, of course. But that is not what I meant. Your time as captain of this expedition has surpassed that of Captain Hunt. But that is not at the but that is not the case in the eyes of all. Sailor loyalty runs deep in their veins. Take the Stoke brothers, for instance. They voted against you. They will speak of Hunt as the captain and refuse that moniker on you. Every song that Elder One plays on his accordion, their traditional songs of the sea folk, his loyalty to Hunt is clear as day. I would be careful around those two. All that it is, all that is needed, is one insubordinate with enough pull to lead the crew astray. They may be loyal to hunt, but they do their work. That's all I care about. Um, 
I mean, even if that's all I actually care about, I mean, do I really need to... to say that? I mean... Yeah, I think that's okay. I'm simply stating what we should look out for. Regardless, you have some requests to deal with. They're waiting outside. Alright, let's do these requests. Kind of embarrassing to spend 50 minutes... Oh, man, that's so embarrassing. Mr. Gloss Jr. and Cordell. Jr. is the important one here. Gloss doesn't really matter. It's probably going to be a decorum thing. And Cordell is almost a lost cause. Captain Shaw. Serious teeming with life. Naive life at that. These creatures have never seen humans before. They do not even know to run. Some will even approach out of curiosity. In my opinion, we should be engaging in hunts as often as possible while we can. Agreed. Thank you, Cordell. Cordell exits. Uh, that was simple. Well, despite it all, we've managed to land ourselves a hefty piece of meat. A leopard seal. And fish. It's up to you how we repair it, Shaw. Feasting on the thing would be nice. I feel pretty confident in the amount of food that we have on hand and our ability to get more food with the um, and our ability to get more food. So let's feast on the leopard seal. I mean, that's okay anyway. Because we're getting the food from it. Yes, tonight we feast on the leopard seal. Nice. Look at that. Food, decorum, and loyalty. That's a good call. I'm sure the crew will be ecstatic. I mean, we needed the food anyway. Captain. I have this bottle of wine in my personal stores. My wife and I plan to enjoy it on our trip home, but it seems that much further out than we first believed. So we thought, why not share it with the crew? Bring in the new camp proper. Better idea we should... Excellent idea. Thank you. Hey. Unexpected loyalty from him. And some more decorum. Agreed. A little drink will help raise spirits. Pardon the fun. That was pretty good. That was a good call. So. Let's take stock real quick. Hammond is not as high as we would like. And Grimely... Grimly is not high at all. But his brother. So that's three. Three. So that's three. I think that's four total. Then another four. And another four. So the only people we don't have are one, two... And then the amount that Grimly has, which I think is four. Junior, Junior, Grimly, 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 Junior, Grimly, Junior. So Grimly actually has one, two, three, four, five people and himself. So that's six with just Grimly. Junior has three, and that makes sense because Junior is easier to get than Grimly. So Grim, so Junior brings four with him. Junior bring, I mean, I'm sorry. Junior brings four with him. Grimly brings six, including himself. So, so out of the 25 crew, I think I don't have eight on my side, which is reasonable. All right, let's go do the day. Are you just waking now? Couldn't sleep. Scared of another seal attack, eh? Aye. Well, at least you're honest about it. 
Okay. So, what we want to do is put two people in here. Uh, those are freezing people. And an engineer. Okay, leave. So, depending on how we do finding stuff, three, six, nine, twelve. Well, we can only explore three times. Three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Let's get a scout going. Seal. Okay. And these are also three. Penguins. So what would I actually like to do? So I could get two people to go hunting for food. I could potentially do... Two groups hunting for food. The three scientists preparing medical things, and then the straggler person going to the tent for research and five points of decorum. Or, go back here. What about the hoosh pot? I've got five fish, so I could technically... Technically, I could send one more um, I could send the last scout out that would take three away put three more fish back in and get two groups going out and then still have three people left over I think that would be better, and then, so the three people left over would go to the medical tent. Let's make those the... So, send that person out. So, I still want two groups. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then those three would go... We wouldn't get to quorum and we wouldn't get the research, but I think I think that's okay. Let's try to do that. Let's send a person out here. Scout. Go. More penguins. I want to feed the hoosh three fish. Wait. Yeah. Return. Now we want to send two groups out. That's going to be five more seals. Let's send another group out. Three and the engineer. That's going to be five penguins. Oh, I still have two dogs left over. Jeez. Unfortunately, I don't have enough people, really, to do stuff. And I think... Did I already put those people in bed? I did. Okay. Let's have them cook up something. Something. 
Assign three to instantly gain one medical comforts item. It can be used to immediately cure all people in the med bay. That might be useful for the week. Like, if I get a lot of people sick, I could put three people in, cure them, take them out, I guess, and put three more people in. I think. I think that might be how it works. Let's test it. If you can give me these, I can get the crew back on their feet. Leave. So I'm out of people. So all I need to do now... Let's go out. Let's put some stuff in the hoosh. to the furnace. Let's put a thing. Uh, okay. So that gets me above what I want for the week. I might try going down to half on the furnace because I don't know... I don't know how bad it's going to get. <laughs> I think that should be it for the week, though. I think we can call for dinner. The crew have their meal. Dinner is shared and stories are traded. Lots of people to talk to. Have you ever attended the theater, Captain? It is a luxury I have not indulged in quite some time. A good ten years at least. That's good to know. Perhaps we can trade experiences at some time. Enjoying the craft of the theater, it is quite the escape, Captain. A shame that it is a luxury we cannot carry with us on the ice. Dogs need their rest, as do I, as do you. <clears throat> that was definitely Joe's coat we found, wasn't it? Think they're all still out there? I wouldn't be surprised. Hunt's tough for an old man. We don't know how long that jacket was there. Don't get your hopes up. Captain, tell them not to get carried away. I don't know. We can't know anything for certain. Why couldn't they... He didn't like that? Ah, oh, that jacket means something. It could mean Joe froze to death. Well, don't you have a sunny disposition? I'm being realistic. Okay. It's so hard to figure out what some of these people like. Timmy, don't be wandering off. I'm fine, Dad. Stick close to me. Don't know what's out there. I said I'm fine. You look a bit shaken, Chief. Worried about another attack from some beastie? Aye, we're worried about one of them getting onto this boiler. If it's wrecked, we're done for. Think we should have overnight watch then? I'll handle that. Of course you will. Do another over here. Lost in thought? Our encounter with the wildlife has left me rather perturbed. We can only be thankful that none were harmed. Indeed. So let's talk to our four other people. And then we'll get to the... Shaw. I heard the photographer calls my songs poetry earlier. Never thought about being a poet. Can't even write. Or 
Writing isn't a requirement, poetry is oral too. Music and poetry are similar. They might as well sing at that point. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Are poets just lazy musicians? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay, nod to your sleeping bag. Ah, God, it sucks that I lost that five there. I didn't think you would lose five for that. God, he's so high. Captain, you needn't call me here so frequently. You receive your updates each day. You should focus on the crew, on your own rest. This is my rest time with my acquaintance, Mr. Tipplin. Flattery. <laughs> I do not deny that we are partners in this endeavor. I suppose to act of survival goes beyond a simple professional relationship. You know, it strikes me that it seems like I'm trying to play the game in a way where it's like, oh yeah, Shaw just tries to get along with everyone. But I, I do think that is the, the nature of being a good captain or leader in any situation is like you've got to you have to change how you are or how you interact with with any given individual uh, and understand sort of like what they want and need in a relationship with you and that way you can get them to do the things you need them to do at the time that you need them to do it so uh, I mean I think in that respect this game is very good at what it's doing in that you can play Shaw in a sort of way where you're like, oh, he's just always going to be such and such character and he never adapts. But I don't think Shaw, or I should say that Shaw is a leader. He shouldn't have been promoted if he wasn't good at interacting with people and learning their needs. So I do think that this is sort of like the ideal way to do a playthrough. Um, but maybe not the best RP way. Like, maybe it would be very funny to play a Shaw who just constantly offends everyone and is not actually a good leader. <laughs> uh, let's talk to Hammond. Evening. That rescue ship better be coming. Don't trust the benefactor to follow through. Haven't, haven't you worked with them before? Aye, and they paid me well, when all goes right. They've always been the type to weigh their purse before anything. I overheard some crew talking about how they missed proper food back on land. Ungrateful bastard, should've smacked them. Ha, <sighs> can't blame them though. We've been out here quite a while. Uh, their complaints are ridiculous. There's nothing wrong with your food. You don't miss the land, do you? I think that's... The middle one's obviously wrong. This one... I think he would like us complimenting his food, but... You don't miss the land, do you? Let's go with it. I know that, as do they, I bet. Still, they miss something. That's fair. For me, it's the sea I miss. Fair enough, we're not actually on the sea. Okay, let's do this talk. You make your way towards the main camp, approaching Kurt as he speaks to Nutley. Well, 
It's not that I find use in it. I understand. I know the struggles of having so much pressure put on you at your a at a young age. So, you're saying you were nervous when you were my age? No, of course not. I was six foot five inch hooker in rugby. <laughs> but, of course I can empathize. You approached and you noticed Kasha following close behind you, a few steps back with some hesitation. Kurt's eyes catch you. He calls both of you over. Ah, Captain Shaw. I was just helping our good doctor. Our first trip out onto the ice left him shaken, and I'm set to calm his spirits. It'll take more than a pep talk to set Nutley straight. Nutley is more resilient than he appears. He'll be fine. Uh, I mean, I think both these are dumb answers. Yeah, Nutley's good. Bam, look at that. He likes, see, he just likes being trusted. Nutley is noticeably taken aback by your statement. Do, do you really think that? Of course, I can see it myself. I know a brave man when I see one, and I'm looking at one right now. <laughs> Why, who's behind me? That comment causes Kasha to laugh profusely. <laughs> Why the laughter? Oh, you are serious? Apologies. Nutley stares at the floor. I probably don't have it in me, not compared to the rest of the crew. The rest? Yes, I look at someone like Hammond, rescuing the boiler, how Kasha covered the plagues in the streets, and you, with your famous expeditions. What do I have? Kasha steps forward into the conversation. Is that some kind of jape? You're a doctor. You perform surgery. That's brave enough as it is. Oh, thank you. You're a trained surgeon. None of the rest of us can say that. I mean, yeah, that should be obvious. Like, other than maybe Kurt and the navigators themselves, right? Like, people who can sort of... I mean, at the end of the day... You can just look at the numbers of people to see sort of who the most important is. Kosh is probably the least important overall, but, uh, you know, I mean, there's more sailors, there's more laborers than the other people. You don't have very many scientists. You don't have very many engineers. Um, you don't have any more than one doctor. You're assuming he's capable of actually performing. We we'll all need to be brave in our situation. It's true, Nutley. You're a valuable part of the crew. Damn. Five from all of them. This game's easy. I am. Right. Yes, I am. Thank you, Captain Shaw. I, we're all doing a good job of pulling our weight around here. Nutley returns to his tent as Kurt begins to share stories by the campsite with Kasha. The young journalist is keenly taking notes. talk to him. Okay. So that should have freed up the three people who were there. Evening, Shaw. We've been here quite a while, haven't we? As long as I've been on the ice, no doubt. What was your previous record? Nowhere close. Not even a month. If you stay this long and make it out. Apologies, Captain. Didn't mean to cast a dark cloud. I could, I could believe it. This looks pretty... Did we bring the... We brought a boat with us. That's cool. Is that our food? Neat. Alright, let's go to the... Doctor's tent. Captain, something worrying occurred to me. Enough time has passed that those back on land will know. Something went wrong. My parents are optimists, but they've no doubt done their research on expeditions such as this. They must be missing you dearly. You knew the risks. I mean, obviously that's not right. They must be missing you dearly. Sympathize with her. Mm, my parents, da, da, da. 
Let's not worry her. Maintain that optimism. Oh, of course. But they're much less easily comforted. Well, I mean, they're also in a better situation than you are. Captain, I realized something. Enough time has passed now. My family, they'll know something went wrong. My father must be mortified. My mother, I can't imagine how worried she must be. father must be mortified. My mother, I can't imagine him. Uh, this one seems difficult. I'm finding, I'm finding Nutley here difficult to sort of, to pin down. He has a fairly complicated personality. All the more reason to return home sooner, is it not? I don't think that one's right. It's reasonably homesick, Arthur. Try to stay strong, though. That sounds like we're casting doubt on him, but maybe not. I'm certain your father is more concerned for his son than he is mortified. Okay. Whew. Yes, of course. But he pointed me in the direction of this expedition. That must weigh heavy. That could be true. <laughs> this was a heavy week. But I think we're done. Seems right. Oh no. Oh, that's bad. I don't think we have enough to do this. I thought two crew members will develop freezing. That sucks. <laughs> this will be one member develops freezing. Crap. We don't have enough fuel. How are we going to find more? Uh, I thought it was going to get warmer, but... Do I want two to develop freezing? If... Let's just leave it as is for right now. So we got 10 more food, 14 crew available. Got one freezing, two freezing, three freezing, four freezing. We have five freezing. Do we? <laughs> it only says four. Uh, it's colder again. Bro. You approach Hammond at the boiler. Morn, I'm starting to miss that ship. I've got spare time on my hands. First time for anything. <sighs> you say that like it's a bad thing. I'm sure you'll find something to do. <laughs> Sure, 
congratulations. Crap. I was worried about that. Spare time is a poison. You want to avoid it when you can. Hammond again? Jesus. I'm not accusing you of anything. Why do you keep launching question at me? I told you on the ship the engineering was impeccable. Then why did we sink, Hammond? Why am I sentenced to the ice? I have more important things to do be getting on with, Templeton. I just need to know what happened to the Temperance. Was it sabotage? They stop and turn to you. Captain, good of you to join us. Templeton was just interrogating me. Not an interrogation. We all have questions here, Mr. Hammond. Who's paying for this madness? You must questions. You must have questions of your own, Hammond. I too right a bloody do. Does Shaw not even know who the benefactor is? Templeton looks between the two of you and considers the moment. The scientist scans the room before moving to pick up a food tin from the corner. He lifts the tin and throws it towards you. Inspect the tin. Apperton Tinning Company. Tinned fresh peaches. Consume within three days of opening. Are you serious? That's who is paying for this. We might die in the middle of frickin' nowhere for a tinned food company, Shaw. They have additional investments. I'm fairly sure we used to ship these in the Merchant Navy. <clears throat> it's no matter anyway, the money is good. This changes nothing about the mission. The mission is still our survival, not money. Of course, but I'm certain you would appreciate handsome pay as a reward for said survival. The two men observe each other. Are we all in agreement, Captain? Aye, for now. Hammond exits, and let's do the week's requests. Four, okay. Let's get the hard ones out of the way. Shaw, notice something. Crew go into these interviews with the photographer all shaken. Crew go into the, those interviews with the photographer all shaken. But they're always feeling better when they come out. It seems speaking with Belford helps alleviate some of their stress and trauma. I thought you should know. Well, Captain, we should continue to send any shaken crew her way. I think that should have been obvious by this point. All right, Junior. Shaw. I did a stock on our current food after leaving Temperance Camp. We're burning through our food stores at a fair rate. Luckily, game is abundance here. It should not be difficult to stock by further food stores. For the time being, yes. But winter is approaching fast, and with it, the game will start to dry up. We need to make the most of our time here if we're going to survive the winter. What is your estimate, Mr. Stoke? It's hard to say, but we'll need enough to last us 12 weeks. 12 weeks? <laughs> 12 weeks? And that's at a bare minimum, assuming the tightest rations possible during the winter. Captain, we have a great opportunity to increase our food stores by a considerable degree, but we must consider the encroaching winter. If we do not have enough to last the winter, survival is just not possible. Captain, the sunlight won't last forever, you know. No time like the present to play a game of rugby. Game with the crew? That's what you're suggesting? Why not? Keep spirits high and the blood pumping. An active crew is a healthy crew. A simple game always did wonders on my old expeditions. So 
this could theoretically give us some decorum. Five people. If I do three, that'll be down to 13. Let me look at the food supplies. He said 12 weeks, right? So, m assuming I'm at the minimum where we get a person malnourished every week, that would be 25. Right, so 25, that's 200 at 10 weeks, and 250 at 12 weeks. Um, that is, every 10 of these is 60, 60, 120. Uh, da, 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 da. What was that, 30, 120, 150. 50 and then another 12 so we're not there yet although we could technically throw in some spoiled rations but I think we can get up to what we need um, let's put some people on this thing I want the scouts around Might want the scientists around? Maybe. <laughs> I'm not gonna send Glossley out to. I guess I could heal the people. Oh, uh, that's possible. If it instantly heals, that's fine. Four. This could be a good thing, though. Three. Four. Hold on, let me go back. If I do all four of my sick people... Do they not count the sick people as 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Alright. 3, 4, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Let's do the four people. It's fine. Ten loyalty, six decorum. Oh, that was it. <laughs> Captain, this is Mr. Gloss, a scientist. Pleased to say I have quite the headache this morning. The crew greatly appreciated the wine. It's only a shame that we have to wait until we're back on land for more. A grand celebration for our return home is in order. Well, now we concern ourselves with getting home. Best not celebrate early. Of course, of course. Still a good time to be had. Ugh. Templeton. Captain, perhaps you may have noticed some discontent among the crew. Sideways glances and the like? Have you? Indeed I have. You may thank the Elder Stoke for that. Perhaps you should listen to what he's been playing as of late for the crew. Songs of disrespect, songs of mutiny. Seems intent to sow distrust for you among the crew. He is becoming a problem. He never should have kept that accordion. The act of insubordination wasn't what do you suggest we do. I feel we sh I should make peace with the man somehow. I fear you will have a difficult time, Captain. Stoke seems to have dug his in his heels. You will need to find some way to appease him. Either that or remove his accordion from the equation. I will hear these songs for myself first. Very well. Hear them for yourself. All right. 
Life's better when you're not lugging equipment off a ship, don't you think? So this is two of the sailors. Lefty. Har. And you're one of the young ones. I was throwing my back out every day. Some well-deserved rest coming our way. If you think this is the end of our work, you've another thing coming. That's probably true. And the dogs. Let's pet them. And... So we have 12 crew. We definitely want more food. Well, let's explore. Oh, wait. I want to... Oh, it's all crew in the... Oh, no! I made a tragic mistake. Oh, no. What the heck? Well. That's restarting the day. And just to be on, just to be correct here. I feel that restarting the day because not fully understanding a game mechanic is fair versus restarting the day because you dislike the outcome. Like that was because I didn't understand the ordering of the system. So I'll go with what I actually said. I did think about trying to get a different answer there, but we'll go with what I said. And here, let's, uh, Navy, uh, the mission is our survival, and let's do the day's things again, junior, what is your estimate, need 12 weeks, and that's at the bare minimum assuming the tightest rations possible. Don't know. Okay. So I'm going to do four again, unfortunately. I don't think that's great, but... get some more decorum here okay let's go back uh, have you and I feel that I should make peace they'll say we that'll be difficult and I'll have to hear the songs okay so let's go over here people now we can go hopefully cure three people. Med bay. Let's put all three of them in here. Command to rest and use this. Three more crew available. Excellent. And now. Now. Oh, can I not put people in the med bay still? What? That's annoying. <laughs> Cures crew of freezing. 
What happens if a person is not... I think as long as we have one, um, beat the furnace. Uh, that's really bad. Send her out. Oh, Emperor Penguins are nice. <laughs> Let's send this guy out. This should be three, I believe. Another Emperor Penguin. Those are good. I think I'll... I think I will... Two, three. Send him... Okay, let's go get these Emperor Penguins again. Four. So that should be nine times ten, basically. So that's a lot of food from these Emperor Penguins. That'll leave me with two people. Who's the other person? Oh, this guy. You know what? I should have... I should have... Instead of committing to... Uh, yeah, darn it. I could have got the dogs back and sent this guy on another sh expedition. Oh, well. Um. Okay. Who am I looking at? One, two... Three, four. And then we'll go back here and we will Let's send a person to Pasha, I guess. Send her. Five to Quorum, one research, not bad. Fortunately, you cannot put more than one person. Uh, you can only use the beds once a week. Mm. Though you can instantly heal the people in bed to get more people. So, a pretty decent week on decorum and stuff, but now I'm worried about fuel. Yeah, fuel could be really bad. And... As, as long as we're above what I need, that's fine. Okay, return, and I believe that's it for the first half of the day. The crew have their meal. Dinner is shared and stories are traded. Let's talk with some people. Shaw, do you look at me as an old man? Don't mistake me. I know I'm getting up there in years, but I'm a father, not a grandfather. You're perfectly capable. It's alright, Robin. I don't mind being seen as the old man, just so long as I'm not the useless old man. Captain, something occurs to me. I know startlingly little of your life. You have invited me here several times now, and I have given little thought into asking you have invited me here several times now. I've given little thought into asking about your own affairs. A staggering lack of etiquette, would you agree? I don't care much for etiquette. I haven't been offended. 
Well, is there something you wanted to know? There isn't much to know. You needn't ask. I don't think that's right. Um, do we need to reassure or do we need to ask her? Or is there something you wanted to know? I don't care much for etiquette. I haven't been offended. I suppose one, one wouldn't expect the kennel master to concern themselves with such matters to begin with. Rest assured, I will not be try tying myself to the matter of etiquette in the future. You are Captain Shaw. That is all I need to, all I need to know. Enough time has passed. Our benefactor may have realized that a disaster has occurred. I've known our benefactor for quite some time. Rest assured, they will not be giving up on this expedition. ill fated to begin with let us hope not our hope right on it do they care about the crew or the mission let's hope not our hope ride our hopes ride on their rescue ship we can trust them to send rescue responsibility on our end lies on surviving long enough to see it hmm. Damned. crewmate just asked me if the dogs could serve as emergency fuel I don't think they were serious, but I had a bloody good laugh imagining the kennel master's face if we suggested it. Sure, you tell Cordell, I'll watch. Kasha will work on your obituary. Uh, I think that would be funny. Well, would they? You're a funny one now, aren't you? Pretty sure it's the captain's job to pass on that message. You should try it. Uh, let's talk with the people inside. Captain, I was playing with Cordell's dogs earlier. I think when I return home, I'm going to get myself a pet. Not a dog, though. Maybe an exotic bird like a parrot. There's that optimism. Good to hear. Better than worrying about what I can't control, right? I can only speculate on what's happening thousands of kilometers away. And speculation does me no good. Alright, Nutley. Captain, I've made friends with this group. Kasha, Kurt, Junior. They've all treated me with kindness since I arrived. Sorry, I just had to say that out loud. To someone. I, I suppose it sounds awfully child childish to brag about, doesn't it? Like, I feel, <laughs> I feel like the, some of the answers were kind of poorly done. Childish, no pathetic, maybe. Not at all, I'm happy for you, Arthur. It's okay to be childish, Doctor, you're still in your youth after all. Uh, no, not at all, I'm happy for you, Arthur. Wow, tin loyalty. I'm just happy I can admit something like that. It's, it's kind of you to listen. Like, it's not, we're not even really doing much for the guy. Like, you know, we're just, like, normal conversation. I think even the sort of brute, rudest, most brash person would, you know, as long as you're not sort of hard-boiled completely, you would be just handy, having a standard conversation with the guy. It's like, no, you're fine. You're doing great, doctor. All right, this should be our accordion playing. You notice the sailors are still seated around the campfire, listening with rapt attention as Grimly plays on his accordion. As he continues to play, the crew join in on the song. Oh, this is interesting. Captain I a frozen arse hard as rock no thaw and soon never tells which way is south 
Hardly tells their arse from mouth. They never had a notion for taking our command. Send us to the hells for biscuits. We eat out of their hands. We eat out of their hands. Captain Hunt could take a ship further than his fingertip. Captain Shaw can't move a pace. What a waste of hauling space. They never had a no ship or taking our command. Send us to the hells for biscuits. We eat out of their hands. We eat out of their hands. Okay, I think uh, I think the chorus is over. That was pretty good, actually. I kind of liked it. <laughs> uh, grimly, may we speak in private? Um, I don't think it's actually smashing the accordion is obviously the wrong answer here. Everyone's enjoy all the laborers, right, are enjoying themselves. Grimly, may we speak in private? Uh, I think the correct answer is to laugh it off. Laugh it off and be like, yo, I mean, that that was pretty good. Guess what? I'm the captain. Get to work sort of deal. You let out a laugh and the crew look to you. They begin to laugh in turn. Seven decorum. Festivities of dinner wind down all as all return to their business. Uh, okay. So we got... Do we have more stuff to do? Dogs need to rest, as do I. I'm flattered. Get some rest. We're on staff. Captain, you have any children of your own? No. None. Didn't think so. Most of the crew don't know what it's like. Listen in. Shouldn't you be with your father, lad? I'm grown enough. I thought the same at your age. I long time ago. <laughs> Consider yourself lucky someone's taking care of you, lad. Tucker. Captain, I never thought I'd say it, but I'm starting to miss being on proper land. more drink back on land it does have that going for it a lot of bad memories back on land uh, okay you know I used to be much taller than Grimly when we were growing up it would piss him off something fierce being the older brother even Hunt would poke fun don't know why I'm remembering that now I don't suppose he'd appreciate me poking fun, would he? He'd deck you, no doubt. He even tried that with Captain Hunt a few times. That's kind of funny. It's good to have some music with your dinner, is it not? I suppose we should take what is given to us. I intended to bring a phonograph, but there was no space among my equipment. A shame. But I quite enjoy what we have now. I must retire for the evening. Yep, yep. Okay, and I think we've already got... Yep. Grimly? Hunt had a musician on his crew when I was a small one. Learn how to make and play the accordion from them. Then they just left. Always wonder what happened to them. Can't have been happy to leave without a word. I take it they were a carpenter as well. I suppose you admired them, did you? <laughs> mm, I think it's the wrong one, but I don't actually know. I take it they were a carpenter as well. Okay. Admired the music. Knew what I wanted to do right then. <clears throat> All right. 
that should be it for the evening. Nothing happening. Go to week 14. Okay. No malnourishment. Man, people are freezing. God, this this fuel situation sucks. And I'm assuming like we're about to hit the point where we get a lot of people frozen. I think I maybe made a mistake. <laughs> maybe made a mistake. Because people are coming out. I didn't think food, or uh, I didn't think rations, or I'm sorry, I didn't think fuel would be the problem. But we do have 40 weeks, and there doesn't seem to be any way to get more fuel. All right, I'm going to take a uh, five, ten minute break. All right, and I'm back. <clears throat> while I was uh, while I was getting some tea, I looked up how to get fuel. Like, where is it? Um, and apparently... You can counteract, well, there's two ways. Uh, well, one way to get fuel, which is to burn uh, food. I do remember seeing that you can, each uh, piece of food, when you're throwing it in the hoosh pot, actually tells you, hey, this is worth whatever in the boiler and this much in the hoosh. Um, never dawned on me to throw seal in the boiler to get fuel but you can and the second way is to to uh, apparently you can put engineers on the boiler to counteract freezing now I don't know if that will cure everyone of their freezing but it might um, let's go down to half Half rations on fuel, we'll spend 10, uh, 10 whatever, 10 decorum, and we'll get two freezing members, and we'll see how that goes. Nobody will be malnourished, though. Plus 10 emperor penguins, plus 14 available crew. Runt, we'll see. Mr. Zack, Dick. What? Crap. How do I cure frostbite? Look up here. <laughs> Causes malnutrition, blah, blah, blah. Um, this one wandered into my tent this morning. Come along, Pascal. Don't bother the doctor. Did he get into your stores by any chance? No, he just woke me from my sleeping bag. He was licking my face. A friendly one. No need to be frightened, Doctor. I, I'm not. Of course. You know, Richard, I much prefer a hearty dinner of wild game to what we had before. Never could stomach those tinned rations, least of all the peaches. Is that so? I admit I might be a little biased. Where I'm from, you could get fresh peaches by the bundle, right off the tree. Bite into one of those, and it takes me right back to my childhood. 
Yes, peaches, a native to your home island, I, as I understand. Apperton didn't quite do the flavor justice when they decided you should all should have them. It's all too processed, I say. Well, concessions have to be made in order to encourage further production. Are you sure there is an issue... Uh, are you sure there is issue with the flavor? Or do you simply prefer to live off the land? You know, it may be just that. I admit there's a certain satisfaction in gathering your meal yourself. It's how we all did it hundreds of years back. Thankfully, those days are long behind us. Anyway, I must attend to the day's requests. <coughs> Excuse me. Morning, Captain. I think I'm going to miss the summer when it leaves us. Why is that? Winter means colder. Colder means having to waste more fuel on this bloody thing. Not looking forward to that, let me tell you. Okay. Let me see how this works. Oh no. That's bad. He's freezing. So I've got three, four, five. Five freezing people and one frostbite person. When raising the heat, each assigned engineer will instantly cure a random person of freezing. I can do three, but I've only got two. Um... Hmm. This is really rough, actually. So... Bay. Can I put this dude? I can. Will that actually get the frostbite off or will it get him cured up? And furthermore, will the engineers randomly heal these people as well? That would be annoying. What's the best I can do here? I think the best I can do is put three of these guys in. And then put both engineers on. And hope the engineer cures himself. And then one remaining person will get frostbite. Uh, let me go back to med bay. Let me put the scout in. Let me put the scientist in. Let me put this person run to him, I'm sure. Three to rest. Leave. Leave. Let's go in the furnace. Ask the engineers to overload it or something. I don't know how you get the third person. That's weird. <coughs> Maybe, uh, hmm. maybe there was an option inside of the, uh, in the, in the ship to get tools or something? I don't know. Um, let's put these two here. The old freezing. Healed freezing. Oh. Wait, what? So, who got healed? Hold on. Okay, so the engineer... Oh, very nice. So they automatically heal. And so then the three people who are... One, two... Frostbite, he's in there. He's in there. 
he should be in there as well. I think. Hold on. Let me look at something. Who do I have in here? Scientist, little kid, and... Oh no. Did I not put... He's in val- okay. That's what the problem is. Jeez. This game. I'm enjoying the game, but not understanding some of the mechanics is kind of rough. Okay. Let's hear what everyone's got to say. So, why is that? Yep, waste fuel. Okay, so what we want to do here. So, I don't know if the... Okay, so yeah, he's completely invalid. So we can't actually use him for stuff, I believe. Okay, so the invalid, the med bay, he has to go in there, and then I want him to go in there, and our scientists, so that's the three in there, minus two crew, okay, so yeah, because one crew was already invalid, now let's leave, we'll go to the furnace, Ask him to raise heat, it'll be him and him, and then that will potentially heal these two or this guy. Okay. So, Runt was healed, and that guy was healed. So, he should get frostbite next week, I believe. But that's okay. I think. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay, great. Now we can do the day's requests. Nutley. Captain Kurt's game of rugby was a rousing success. Everyone was eager to get involved. I'm not, but uh, Kurt did drag me into a game. I was tackled fairly hard. I'm still feeling it, to be honest. I'm not alone. I'm not surprised there was much rough housing involved. Still, everyone had a great time, despite the multitude of aches and pains. If you'll excuse me, I need to lie down now. Runt. Captain. I've been thinking. What is it, young man? Well, I'm not a very good sailor. I'm small and I'm not very strong. Well, we're sorry to hear that. But I still want to help. There's plenty of sailors, but there's not as many scouts, or scientists, or engineers. Well, those roles require quite specialized skills. I can learn. Dr. Nutley loaned me his books, and I've been learning to read. I can still help, just a little. Well, earning a doctorate is out of the question in this scenario, but training isn't out of the question. If you're diligent, I suppose you can be taught some of the basics, enough to lend a hand at least. That's what I thought. Captain, please. Make your way to Nutley. From now on, your assistant, go speak with Hammond. He'll show you the ins and outs of engineering. Head to Kurt. He'll be happy to have another scout on his team. You're fine as a sailor, Timmy. You'll grow into the role. Well, I think I just spoke for myself when I said um, we could get... 
I think I think the engineer is gonna be run here. Nutley would give me a fourth person to lay down, maybe. But engineer. Oh wow. Lovely. I doubt Hammond will have much patience for the boy. Though I suppose that impatience will lead to quick results if young if young Ward has the will. That's great. I'm telling you, you're jumping the gun here. I'm telling you, you're out of your bloody mind. Gentlemen, what seems to be the issue here? Apologies for bursting in like this, but winter's on its way. We need to bunker down, hunker down as soon as possible. If we want to survive the cold, we'll want to camp the camp to be set up for the winter in two weeks. You disagree with this, Kurt. You want protection from the elements, I understand, but I know just how long the winter can last. If we aren't, if we haven't stockpiled enough food, we'll starve to death waiting for the weather to clear. So you would suggest a longer hunting period. Much longer. Five weeks if we can. Oof. Five bloody weeks? Winter will have hit by then. Are you mad? We have enough to live off. Two weeks is all we need. I'm sorry, have you been on the ice before? You talk like you have. Don't need experience to have common bloody sense, do I? Men, calm down. There's no there's no need to turn this agreement personal. Captain, your thoughts. Two weeks, huh? Two weeks of hunting. That is 90 food right there. And then 18 shy of 220 food. Yeah. So 102 food. Uh, 102, 192 food. 200 food. I suppose we could go down to half rations and rely on our doctor and our engineers to keep people unfrozen and healthy if we have to go down to half rations on food. Hammond is right, we can't risk waiting too long. Two weeks. Can I get enough food in two weeks? I don't know. I don't know. I guess it depends how long it is. I feel like I've been pretty... pretty forward about getting a lot of food, or um, I haven't really neglected it. <clears throat> I don't have to think it over. Two weeks, three weeks? Uh, I don't think we... I don't think Kurt's right. I don't think we need five. I would settle for like three, though, maybe. God dang it. You have to decide. Can't afford to be hesitant. Enough, both of you. Captain Shaw will think the matter over. I trust the captain's choice. Perhaps two weeks from now, circumstances will change. We will see. Now, if you both carry on with your work, fine. Okay. I trust you, Captain. Ugh, that was rough. Let me see. Hammond's still good. Kurt's still good. Most people are actually pretty good here. The only person 
is really Cordell and Stoke. Hmm. I think that was the right call, though. Captain, a suggestion. Mr. Zack here. The ice at this camp seems stable enough that we could conceivably drill a hole through it. For what purpose? Ice fishing. I understand the crew are quite adept at the pastime, and it would prove a pathway to gather more food. That could be interesting. I can put up to three. He's invalid, and he's resting. If I do this, um, so I'm going to send two scouts out. That's going to be nine people. Let's go back. I mean, fish is fish. Fish would be food. 11 people send two out to search for stuff, maybe. Maybe only one. That would leave nine. Doug, Rumstad, Ward. I wonder if they can ice fish in peace relatively. Four, two, send two out. And I've got one, three. Okay. Let's put two on this. Oh, we gotta do three. Can we only do one? Oh, we have to do all three? Oh, we do have to do three. Hmm. All right, the scientists then. We'll put the old guy. Plus five loyalty. All right, it's a risk. The earlier debate between Mr. Hammond and Mr. Darling was quite worrying. If our navigator and engineer are at odds, a divide will form amongst the crew. They're both reasonable men, it won't come to that. You can only hope. The crew is like the body. Each organ must be working in tandem if we are to survive. Right you are, Templeton. Right you are, sir. Okay. Let's overhear stuff. So this is as warm as it gets down here. Still cold, isn't it? You think you're cold? Wait until your old bones like mine. I hope I'm not still stuck here. When <laughs> Good kid. Junior, warm one today, relatively speaking. I don't know if I'd consider negative 34 Celsius warm. I never understood how we could grow so used to the cold. I can't even handle a proper summer back home these days. An island summer might be just what I need when this gets this is done. Hmm. Okay. This sucks. But wait, he's freezing too. Oh, he is frostbite. Deployed freezing. Deployed freezing. So I could theoretically still put him in there. Okay. Okay, great. 
And so then the three who are already in the med bay should be fine. That works out well. Okay. So let's send scouts. Penguins. I could theoretically just do with one penguin this week. Or one, yeah, one food expedition this week. And then we send... <clears throat> Actually, there's no need to to not send two. Because I can send three and three. Hmm. Okay. So that'll put me down to eight. Let's send them out on one of the longer ones then. Um, no, nah, we'll send them on a three. It's fine. Another three ping, another crap penguins. Okay. So I've only got uh, five people. Four. Okay. There's nothing I can reasonably do. Do I want to send a person just for one? Two penguins? That's 12 food. It might be worth it just to... Just because I'm not going to be able to... Because that person's not doing anything otherwise. Fine. Okay, good enough. Let's call for dinner. Improve their meal. Stories are traded. I've been thinking, Shaw, if this expedition is indeed the end of the line for Kurt Darling, I wonder how they'll speak of me when I fail to return. What will the newspaper say? They'll herald your return and nothing more. Don't lose faith. Ever the optimist. I suppose I should think the same, for the crew's sake at least. Funny, isn't it? No matter what you do in life, you never get to see your own legacy. Hammond. I was looking at my contract, Captain. After you and Templeton, I'm next in command. So don't bloody die. <laughs> I don't want that responsibility. Well now, well, now I can't die. I don't want to subject the crew to your leadership. Better you than Templeton, I say. Okay, so yeah, he likes that sort of like, that sort of humor. You got that bloody right, Captain. Yeah, he'd be a pretty terrible leader, honestly. Oh, let me, uh, put fuel... Hmm. This fuel situation is going to get ugly. Very ugly, honestly. Let's feed the hoosh. I think the fuel might be manageable as long as we can keep the food up, but man, it's going to get bad. It's going to get bad. All right, let's see what's going on with our... Uh, this guy who never likes anyone. You notice the sailors are seated around the campfire, listening with rapt attention as Grimly plays on his accordion. The same song from last week. More of the crew have, joined, have since joined in. 
I guess we can listen again. Templeton approaches, speaking to you in a hushed tone. Captain has a frozen arse. Captain, do you hear this? This has gone on long enough, don't you think? That unites the crew, at least. Against you, is that what you want? This will continue until you put a stop to it. Your leadership is in question, your attack. Um, I guess I'll let it be. Very well, if you don't, don't do something, I will. As the music comes to a close, Templeton marches up to Grimley. Oh, wow. Mr. Glossley, return to your post immediately. The old man catches himself before returning to his tent in shame. Problem? Good song. What's it about? What? What is the song about? The crowd of sailors stay, watching the confrontation. Did Shaw set you up to this? Just tell me, Mr. Stoke. What is that song about? Piss off. So you won't tell me. Grimly reaches forward and grabs Templeton stiffly by the collar. Oh, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> I said piss off. Templeton, I told you to leave Grimly be. <laughs> Calm down, the two of you. There's no need for this. Uh, I think we can actually... This will upset Templeton, obviously. Um, but... Oh, wow. Jeez. <laughs> 20? Good lord. Oh, I actually don't understand Grimly very well. Uh, I don't know why he would have found that so uh, worth being loyal to. Hmm. Sowing seeds of mutiny is not something that can be left be. Grimly releases his grip on Templeton's collar. Sounds like you're the one disobeying orders. Huh. That's kind of true. Templeton. Ahem. If you'll excuse me. Templeton slinks off to his tent as the crowd disperses. I mean, Templeton will be easier to, to get that 10 back than it was to get 20 with Grimly. Jesus. That's actually not bad. What are we looking at here? Oh, he's still so freaking far away, though. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I think Cordell and Grimley are just going to be not. On a ship with Grimley and Hunt, to be honest, that's all I've ever known. Half of my earliest memories of that. When this is over, not sure what to do. You have talent. Plenty of ships will take you on as a cook. Do I want another ship? I don't know. All I know is those days with Hunt are over. Okay, let's start. I'm starting to miss the brow beating heat. Calling this summer feels like a joke. Bundle up more, old man. It will only get colder from here. Seriously, guys? I see the Chiefs got into a bit of a spat with Mr. Darling. Aye. Hammond's brilliant, but he's adamant to make everything harder on himself. Not that Darling's any better. Okay, Hammond. Can you tend to, can't tend to the furnace tonight? I've noticed old Kurt has been butting heads with the engineer lately. Not surprised. Mr. Hammond has butted heads with just about any everyone so far. 
That moleman ought to be careful who he speaks to. He's fortunate Kurt so patient. <clears throat> Let's be fair. Kurt can be as stubborn as the rest at times. I will respect your decision, Captain. Believe me, though, he will only continue to cause issues for us. We've been out here too long. Miss the sea. Just don't feel right on solid ice. Captain Hunt would tell me to suck it up if he were here. I'll say it too. Suck it up, Grimly. Ice is no home. Hmm. I don't know if he likes us agreeing with him. I don't think that's the right answer, all right? You still haven't grown used to it. I feel the same, the ice is no home. Thing is, is I'm not trying to be Hunt. Hmm, agreed. The sooner we get off the ice, the better. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's the wrong move is trying to be like Hunt. He doesn't want you to be another Hunt. How are my favorite crew members, Lady Cordell? Tired. They need their rest. I won't disturb them then. You know, you should treat them... You know, you should treat them more often. They receive all the treats they need, I assure you. Stanberry and Pascal were engaged in a fight this morning. A more serious matter than the usual scrap. I put a stop to it, but it is concerning. Those two often get along. Perhaps the pressure is finally getting... Ice can do this to people. Dogs are no different. Or dogs. I think that's the wrong move. Do you think you're pushing them too hard? I would hope not, but you may be right. The stress can affect us all, can it not? I'll have to be more gentle with that pair in the coming weeks. <clears throat> Let's talk to Kurt. Oh, he's already talked. Let's get this fish. Oh, are you ice fishing? Yes, are you interested? My father would take me fishing quite often. I have some experience. Of course, it's a different story on the ice. Feel free to take the reins, Doctor. Oh, thank you. Perhaps a bit later. I think we're good then. Let's go to. The, oh, wait, no, we didn't talk to them. <clears throat> Before I joined this expedition, I was concerned with how my report would be received. I'm certain the wreck makes for a more interesting story, but before that, it feels like the interest in the great explorers is waning. Perhaps we can renew that interest. That's what I'm hoping for. I grew up on these tales, but don't don't know where I'd be without them. Others may not care these days, but they stick with me. I hope another child latches onto this story. Good evening, Captain. I escaped to talk with Kurt over dinner. He kept asking about my plans for the future. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> Just trying to make conversation, not like don't overthink it. Do you have any do you not have any plans? Understandable. Now most of all, we should be focusing on the present. Agreed. It's hard to think years ahead when we can barely look in a week into the future. I hope I can answer properly in the future. That will be the first step of my plan. That's a good plan, Nutley. Let's go back to our tent. Call it a week. <clears throat> okay. So I'm a thinking 
And it's going to get down to the point where we get four people freezing per cycle. That would be bad. If it gets to that, can I even... Huh. Just have to deal with it as it comes, I guess. Oh, the decorum, though, too. That sucks. Cavity. Came freezing. 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 Cure to freezing. Cure to their frostbite. Cure to freezing. Gnomes is freezing. Grips is freezing. Ugh. Okay.